Hey, Astra Kids, and welcome back. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that I received from Paulo Guevara. So I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. This was about looking at the karmas in astrology. Specifically, the question was about the D60 chart. So firstly, karma is something that is seen through all of the charts in astrology. Karma is something that is not necessarily negative in the sense of astrology. Karma is simply the action that we have come here to perform in this life. So we have certain lessons, certain experiences that we have signed up to experience here in this lifetime. And some of that is connected to past life experience. Some of it is present. Some of it we are creating through our actions. So the D60 chart is a very important chart when we look at karma and astrology. And for those of you who are new to all of this in terms of Vedic astrology, there are 16 divisional charts or Varga charts that are typically used within astrology. So it's not just the birth chart, but there are actually 16 charts. So the birth chart is called the D1 Rashi chart, and that is a general look at your life. It is looking at what is the overall pattern or the karmas that are unfolding in your life. But there are also other charts that look at specific areas, such as the D10 chart, which is taking a look at career. So really, there are three charts that are extremely important when you want to understand the karmas in astrology. And that is the D1 Rashi chart, the D9 Navamsa chart, and the D60 Shasti Amsa chart, which is what we will be discussing today. And the way that I learned this from my teacher is that the D1 chart is like a womb. This is your birth, how you have come into this life. But the D9 chart is like the heart. It is what actually gives life to the natal chart. And this is why looking at the D9 chart becomes extremely important. My teacher also describes the D60 chart as the soul of the chart, the very essence of who we are. So this also becomes an extremely important chart to see. So really, what is the D60 chart? The D60 chart is when we take 30 degrees, which is an entire sign or house in the the natal chart, and we divide it into 60 equal parts. And so this is breaking down the natal chart all the way. And this is why it's very important when we use this chart to be very careful about the birth time that you were using. Another analogy that my teacher gave was that the D1 chart is like fruit and the D9 chart is if you were to squeeze that fruit, all of the juice, all of the essence of that fruit would come out. But the D60 is the last drops of the fruit. It is the final extraction of the juice. So this is showing us the final word in the chart. So in the natal chart, we see positions in the chart, which shows us how these karmas are unfolding. However, it's important that we see those positions also in the D60 chart to understand what is the final conclusion of that karma. So again, accuracy becomes extremely important in the D60 chart because it changes every two minutes, which means that you could have a birth time that is slightly off from the true time of birth. So this becomes extremely important in terms of rectifying the chart. And there are two methods that are typically used to rectify the chart. One is to keep adjusting the time of birth by 30 seconds to see how this time will change the positions in the D60 chart. The method, though, that I have found that works the best, because it does change every two minutes, is to simply change it according to K2's position in the chart. So this is something that comes from Jaimini Astrology, and it is something that is recommended by Sanjay Rath. So the way to do this is to understand the Rashi aspects. So typically in astrology, most people are using the Graha aspects, looking at how the planets are aspecting one another, but signs also have aspects as well. So to understand this, you have to understand the movement or the mode of operation of the signs. So there are three modes of operation. There are movable signs, fixed signs, and dual signs. 
The movable signs are the ones that are adaptable, changeable, flexible. They are constantly in motion. And these signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. The fixed signs are the signs that want to stay the same. They feel comfortable in their comfort zone. They are all about creating a sense of security and stability. And these signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. The dual signs are perhaps the most confusing ones to understand because they are both movable and fixed in nature. They are highly changeable and adaptable able to hold two different ideas at the same time. And typically for the dual signs, if you look at the first 15 degrees of the sign, it is going to lean more towards being fixed because it is closest to the fixed sign. So for example, for Gemini, Taurus comes before Gemini. So the first 15 degrees of Gemini is going to behave in more of a fixed way rather than a movable way. And so that means that the last 15 degrees of a dual sign is going to behave in more of a movable, adaptable way. So the dual signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Now for the Rashi aspects, again, a concept coming from Jaimini astrology, the movable signs are always going to aspect the fixed signs except for the sign that is right next to it. So for example, if you have Aries, Aries will aspect all of the fixed signs except for Taurus. Fixed signs are going to do the opposite. They will aspect all of the movable signs except for the one that is right next to it. And the dual signs will simply aspect one another. So there's an example here of Capricorn, a movable sign which will aspect Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio. But it will not aspect Aquarius because that sign sits right next to it. The next example is of a fixed sign, Scorpio, which will aspect Capricorn, Aries, and Cancer. It doesn't aspect Libra because Libra is sitting right next to it. And for the example of the dual signs, Virgo will simply aspect Sagittarius, Pisces, and Gemini. So dual signs always aspect one another. And again, to make adjustments or changes to the time, the first method is to simply change it by 30 seconds back and forth. But the method, again, that I have found that really works is using that position of K2. So the way that you want to do this is here in this first example, if we take a movable sign of Aries and make it the ascendant in the D60 chart, that means that K2 should be in a fixed sign except for the sign that is right next to it, which would be Taurus. So K2 should be either in Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius. We have an example here for a fixed sign as well. So if Taurus were the ascendant in the D60 chart, then you want to make sure that K2 is placed in Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn. It should not be placed in Aries because that is right next to it. We also have a visual example here of Gemini Ascendant. That means that K2 should either be in Sagittarius, Virgo, or Pisces. So this is a simple method of how you can adjust the time to make sure that the accuracy is there. Now, again, how do you really use this D60 chart? Well, there are really two ways to use the chart. The first one, as I've said, is that you want to use the chart exactly the way that you would use the natal chart. So first house of the D60 still represents who you are, your physical body, your health is seen through that first house. The other method that I like to use the D64 is to verify the results of the planets in the chart. So always when you're looking at the natal chart, you want to see the position of the planets in the D9 and in the D60 as well. The D9 is going to show how those karmas mature. So especially when you get past the age of 35, that this is really going to show you more about your life and who you are in the D9 chart. So that is very important to see. Also, the D9 chart can become active during marriage as well. And there are specific activation times according to the planet that rules over your ascendant. 
So the D9 chart really is always active in your chart. It's always behind the scenes. But as we mature, we really start to step into that D9 because the D9 is our Dharma. It is our path. It is the path that we are meant to walk in life. So for example, if you were to have a Cancer ascendant in your natal chart, but then you have a Leo ascendant in your D9 chart, well, that means you're going to start off life being very sensitive very much emotional. But as you mature in life, you will find that there is more confidence, more self-esteem that comes with time. Now, the D60, as I've said, is the final word. So the D60 actually can be read all on its own. But if you want to check the strength of the planets, then you also want to see how those planets are positioned in the D60 as well. So I have an example here on the screen. Let's say that you were to have a Sagittarius ascendant in your natal chart and you have K2 in the first house and Mars has gone into the eighth house. So Mars is debilitated in the sign of cancer. The dispositor or the ruler planet of Mars is the moon because Mars is positioned in the sign of cancer. So always we have to see the Lord of the sign that the planet is placed in to see how strong that planet is. So the moon also in this example is debilitated in Scorpio and it is positioned in a Dushtana house, which benefic planets like the moon don't enjoy being in these houses. So this shows that Mars is going to be in a weaker position in the chart. Also, Mars is surrounded by malefics. We have Rahu on one side of Mars and Saturn on the other. So this creates something called a pop cartery yoga, where the effects of Mars are not going to be as strong in the chart. Does this mean that Mars is not strong for this person's chart, though? Well, again, we have to check to see how is Mars positioned in the D9 chart and in the D60 chart to really get the final say of how strong Mars is functioning for this individual. So if we go into the D9 chart, we can see that Aries is rising. So Mars becomes the ascendant Lord. This is extremely powerful. This is one of the signs of strength that we can see already. We also can see that Mars has Digbala in the 10th house. It has directional strength when it is placed in the 10th house. This is another indication of strength for the planet. Mars is also exalted in the sign of Capricorn, another sign of strength. And Mars is receiving an aspect from Jupiter, which is again, another sign of strength. We also have Saturn, which is placed in the first house. And you may think that this is negative, but actually we have an exchange that is happening because Saturn is placed in the sign of Aries and Mars is placed in the sign of Capricorn. So Mars is in Saturn's home and Saturn is in Mars's home, which means they are exchanging energy with one another. So they will behave as if they are in their own sign, which is extremely powerful. So we can see that Mars is very strong in this D9 chart. Now let's say in the D60 chart, this is a Leo ascendant. And we have Mars that is placed in its own sign of Aries in the ninth house of the chart, extremely auspicious to be in its own sign, its office sign, the strongest position of Mars, and to be in the ninth house, which is also a very fortunate house. We also have Jupiter, which is in its own sign as well in Sagittarius and placed in another fortunate house of the fifth house. And Jupiter is giving an aspect to Mars. So we can conclude that Mars is actually strong for this individual. It may bring challenges because it is in a difficult position in the D1, but ultimately how Mars matures for this person is very positive. And the final result that Mars will give for this individual is very strong as well. So this is a simple way to look at karmas, to see really how are these planets manifesting in the chart? So many people just take a snapshot of their birth chart and look at single placements and make judgments. But really, you have to look at everything to be sure of the strength and the condition of the planets. So I hope this was helpful. If you like this, make sure to leave a like. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you all in the next video.